live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live 2018. Brought to you by Cisco, NetApp, and theCUBE's ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage at Cisco Live 2018 in Orlando, Florida. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman co-hosting co with me this week for three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Our next guest is Todd Nightingale, who is the Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Meraki team in Cisco. Welcome back to theCUBE, good to see you. Oh, thank you so much, I'm honored to be here. So obviously day one, we got three days. The keynote kicked off, pretty interesting putting a stake in the ground. It's not a new stake, but really amplified by CEO of Cisco, Chuck Robbins said, look at the old, architecture is changing to a new architecture. We've been talking about this for multiple years, no perimeter, new things are changing. Changing the nature of networks. Uh, you, I asked you uh, in 2017 in May about more devices. He actually said a number, of millions and hundreds of millions of new devices and connections constantly coming on. So obviously, here at Cisco, you see all that data, but you nailed it. The networks need to be stable, they need to be programmable. This is really kind of where your mission is. Talk about what's changed since 2017 and now with the new, the new reinvention of the architecture, how do you fit into that? How does Meraki fit into that? Yeah, I, you know, look, I think the industry has really started to realize a lot of these trends. IoT was kind of a future back then. Now it feels pervasive. Everything I look at is connected. My door locks, my uh, toaster oven, my refrigerator, and people are starting to see the impact of that. We're not talking about onboarding two or three devices per user, but dozen or, plus or, or more devices, and we'll have entire sites with dramatically, dramatically more devices, hundreds of devices for every one person. And that IoT world is real, and you know, a lot of vendors, I think, are trying to catch up to that, but Cisco really took an early view at this, and they were able to like build and work on this intent-based network, which is really designed for this modern era of networking. For years, we've been working on that at Cisco, and um, I think it shows, right? That vision that Chuck laid out for us drives, this, drives home this idea of massively scalable networks that are secure as a foundation, and that they have a cloud focus. It's a multi-cloud world. These are going to be uh, connected networks. You know, last time I was here, we talked a little bit about SD-WAN, yeah. in particular, and, and routing. I think that that's a lot of change here, too, is because now that we know that most of our devices, most of our traffic's going to the cloud, SD-WAN is so much more important, right? It's real, too. I mean, right now, SD-WAN is exploding in growth. Use cases are growing. What does that mean? What does that mean for customers? If you look back, SD-WAN was the promise, it was the holy, holy land of, everyone's talking SD-WAN, but now it's really real, it's happening. Yeah. Big time, your thoughts. I, I think SD-WAN is just the future of routing. It is the way we will, it's the way we will get on the internet uh, from here on in, and really, you know, I'm glad to see that all the vendors are looking at bringing more than one type of WAN offering, whether it be uh, LTE or broadband or MPLS, but you know, I believe, and I think at Meraki we believe that True SD-WAN should be about the idea that you bring whatever internet connection you can get, MPLS, LTE, broadband, whatever, and the SD-WAN technology should provide to you the absolute best application experience without any intervention, without any assistance, right? It should be intelligent enough. We should have intelligent, intelligence in the system for it to take any connection it can and give you the best, the best application performance. And I do believe that's the, really the future of SD-WAN. That's how we build our SD-WAN products at Meraki. Yeah, Todd, security of course is hugely important. For those of us that travel a lot, it, it seems like I, I, every, I, I'm constantly getting warnings, like don't log into your hotel Wi-Fi, don't, <laughs> you know, don't do this. You, know, you talk about creating pervasive security everywhere. You know, how, how are we doing and you know, how do we get better? <laughs> yeah, people say a lot of security is about training the user. Uh, we, should be, we should do better than that, right? And simplicity is the key. If we can make the systems incredibly simple for users to use securely, then we don't have to spend nearly as much time training them to be secure. And I think that uh, that's what we see as consumers, is constant fraud alerts and you know, best practices and don't open that email and do open this email. But we can expect more from our technology. It can be, it can be more intelligent, and it can be simpler, and it can make it easy for us to stay secure. And that's what how we focus, really, the security portfolio at Meraki, not just in our um, MX platform, our security appliance, but across all of our products. I mean, just embedding best-in-class encryption, best-in-class mobile device management, policy protection across all our products. The simpler you make it, the more likely we are that people are really using all of it, right, and being as as 
uh, secure as they can be. To, just to follow up on that, in, in the keynote this morning, you know, Ch Chuck Robbins was talking about how cloud was supposed to be this promise of simple, sure. but now it's, it's multi-apps and you know, how many different SaaS providers, I've got multiple public clouds, it's not getting any simpler. You, yeah. know, you, you talk about the, the, the vision for the network, I should be able to take all of them and put them together. So will it really be simple or you know, will Cisco be able to just weave together all of these various options? Yeah, you know, I think Chuck really has it right here. I remember when everyone talked about the cloud as this thing that would be infinitely simple. And now, whenever I talk to a startup getting started, the very first thing they have to buy, even before they figure out what CRM they're going to use or Salesforce or whatever, the first thing they try to figure out is, first we need a single sign-on, multi-cloud authentication solution. I'm like, that is not simple. If that's the first thing you have to think about, I mean, it's not simple. And yeah, we got, I think we got away from that as different cloud solutions became so prolific, there was no real best practice and best standards. And um, especially as we started to try to connect these enterprise sites into these clouds, that's what yeah. really makes them sort of, makes the multi-cloud world complex. And, yeah. and, and it's that connection where I think Cisco's going to drive the most value. It's about bringing all of our physical sites to the cloud in the most secure way and the most you know, performant way. And the well. developers who had Greenfield or startups, they didn't have to worry about that existing complexity in the cloud, so that's an obvious check for the cloud. But also the developers, their roles are changing. I want to get into that with you because we saw people playing with the Meraki switches at the last DevNet Create. Um, but before we get into that, I want to ask you, um, just to get it on the record, you know, explain to the folks out there that um, haven't gotten the update on Meraki, what is the Meraki team doing? What is it? What are you guys focused on? What's your mission for Meraki? Take a minute to, to just put that out there. Sure, yeah. Our, our mission at Meraki is to simplify powerful technology so passionate people can focus on their true mission, whether that mission is technology for education or retail or hospitality. They shouldn't spend all their time you know, just building the most sophisticated three-tier switching network or whatever. They should spend their time really focused on their true mission. And we can, we can let them do that by taking this powerful technology at Cisco and making it simple. And it's, a, and it's, and it's software, hardware, what's the product? Exactly, yeah, and so you know, our, my aspiration is to do that for all IT infrastructure. So for IT shops that want to focus on technology for their mission, I want to try to make kind of keeping the lights on, making their tech, basic technology work as simple as possible. And so we have Wi-Fi and switching, we have SD-WAN routing and a security appliance, we have mobile device management, and we have actual surveillance and security cameras, which more and more are being used for IoT cameras. And all of this um, is all managed from Meraki's dashboard, from a single native cloud experience. Um, eat, so we sell the hardware, of course, but, but our flagship product is the cloud itself, Meraki dashboard, yeah. and it gives you that true 100% native uh, cloud management experience, single pane of glass, and most importantly, simplicity value proposition. It is the simplest to manage, simplest to monitor IT system in the world. And that's the cloud operations, that's the scale that kind of ties into the themes. Absolutely. Okay, now switching gears, I want to get your thoughts on this vision I've been hearing about, this 80-20. Oh. What is this 80-20 rule that you have? Could you just take a minute to explain what it is, why is it important, and where's the relevance and impact for enterprises? Sure, yeah, the Meraki 80-20 rule. Uh, if you're a developer at Meraki, software developer, and uh, the day you get to Meraki, we tell you our development principles, and, and one of them, an important one, is our 80-20 rule. So, you know, we build a pretty broad portfolio at Meraki, wireless switching, routing, all of this network stuff. Um, and, and with that, we want to be, in the areas that we compete, we want to be a complete solution for our customers. But we realize that's impossible, right? So the way we sort of guide our engineers is say, we want you to be a complete solution for 80% of the customers, right? And, and for a lot of like, you know, smaller businesses and schools and even government agencies, that's great, that's great. For those customers, Meraki's a very complete solution, has every function they would ever want. But I don't want my engineering team scrambling around trying to build every vertical specific feature in the world. This healthcare feature, that retail feature, this hospitality feature. So instead, the Meraki 820 rule says, for those last 20% of customers, especially the biggest, yeah. most sophisticated customers, for them, the Meraki 80% is probably going to be only part of the total solution. And we open up our platform. We open up all of our APIs using things like Cisco DevNet. Um, and we bring in a world, a universe of developers, both 
our, our customers actual, actually have developers and can develop to our platform, as well as all of our technology partners who build these applications on top. And that 80-20 rule really is how our engineers decide what to build and what to open up through the APIs and how to, how to build this kind of ecosystem of development partners that expand our solution. So the 20% you're enabling, because what I think I hear you saying is is 20% of those clients, customers, are going to have full stack engineering staffs. They're going to have maybe complexity that might have to figure out and those APIs is where you guys want to oh. keep that open but not predicate certain things, is that right? Yeah, well I think the 20% come in two categories. There's the group that builds, so they have like a full stack engineering team, and they can build their own custom application for hotel management, or for you know, university student uh, enablement, or whatever it is. But then there's another group, they buy, right? So they want something very retail specific, Got it. but instead of trying to build it, they buy it from a partner, we have tons of application development partners who've built on top of the Meraki API and they have awesome solutions. Um, and you can check them all out on, on DevNet uh, or on meraki.io. Yeah. Yeah. Todd, looking forward a little bit, a lot of discussion around 5G and what that will mean for network connectivity. I, I was joking with you, you know, <laughs> before we started that some people were like, well hey, we won't even need Wi-Fi in the future because 5G is just going to you know, plaster the globe oh, with yeah. infinite bandwidth and uh, ah, want totally to be lovely. That. So, you know, what, what's your take? Oh, I, I'll tell you, I'm super excited about 5G. I think, so we think about 5G a lot as like the next generation of cellular connectivity, but the standard goes far, far beyond that. In fact, it gives a pretty uh, prescriptive, and, and I, hope, I hope this will really come, uh, come, come true, it gives a pretty prescriptive uh, recipe for how Wi-Fi can be part of the 5G network. And finally, we'll be able to get all of these indoor networks unified on a single technology, but bringing all of those service provider authentication, service provider services. We're starting to see that with service providers who support voice over Wi-Fi, right? But I think we're going to see a whole universe of like far more integration and really far more seamless service provider connectivity once 5G and all of the hooks into the Wi-Fi network really start to work. We used to call this Hotspot 2.0. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, I think they're going to call it Hotspot 3.0. Um, <laughs> but, but I think 5G is really going to be the time when we start to see it yeah. really really uh, in action. Right. The connectivity piece is critical for IoT. We're seeing machine learning and AI be critical. What's your vision for how machine learning and artificial intelligence is going to bring in to uh, impact smart cities, smart homes? Because as you get to that next step, yeah. I got the connectivity, I got the pervasiveness. Now I need applications, I need security, I need to have a clean user experience. What's the thoughts on how Meraki's going to deliver that? What's your vision? Yeah, look, there are times when the machines are going to do better than the people. And I think we all, with varying degrees of comfort, are going to come to this realization, right? And the network is one, one great example. Like, we just released Meraki Wireless Health and Meraki Insight. And these are both assurance products that are designed around an AI core. The machines are going to be better at scrolling through like radius logs and uh, SNMP traps and all kinds of different data to find those anomalies, to see what's going wrong. And we should expect them to do that. We should not do that stuff anymore. Like the system, the cloud, the Meraki dashboard can do the heavy lifting for us. It can help diagnose when we're sick and help prescribe the cure because that type of AI is going to have a far better understanding of all of that information, that massive amount of data that you have to sort through to come up to the right conclusions. But for smart cities, and, and I am super excited about that space, I mean, we launched this camera portfolio, and we've been driving a ton of machine learning into it uh, right now, and I got to watch the cameras like learn how to count human beings using machine learning, and like it's ama it's amazing. Mind blowing. It is it is <laughs> mind blowing to see machine learning at work, especially in the in the learning phase. And now that 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 this technology can be put in the hands of Meraki customers, it's so easy to deploy, and takes like it just is for everyone now. It's not just for the people with massive data centers and GPU farms and all that stuff. Anyone can deploy this, and we can track uh, people using cameras. I think it's finally gotten to the point where it's like, okay, we can realize maybe human beings shouldn't be staring at camera feeds all day. Yeah. The machines will be better at that for us. Um, and, and that's, I th really think, just the beginning. Counting people, understanding where your traffic is, where there's congestion, having the cities start to become smarter yeah. over time, um, I think is only going to make us all. It augments the reality of having a human do it, but humans still might be involved. 
Todd, thanks for spending the time. I know you're super busy here at the conference. Thanks for coming on. Uh, I want to get final question for you to kind of end the segment. Take a step back and kind of think about the customer interactions you've had with your customers. Share some anecdotes. If people watch, say, hey, this Meraki thing, I want to get to know more of it. The sound's cool. They might be want to kick the tires, might want to jump head first into the deep end and explore. Share some anecdotal feedback you've heard from. What are people saying? What are customers saying? Man, this is the best thing since sliced bread. I mean, what are some of the things <laughs> that you've heard from customers? Share a few sound bites of you know, customer reactions after using Meraki. Uh, it's funny, I, I, I met with a Fortune, uh, a Fortune 500 company this morning and they deployed Meraki to all their branches, like a full stack Meraki site. And uh, he said in his entire time at that company, he's only been hugged after one project and it was for bringing Meraki uh, <laughs> to the company. And I, I, I think people are really reacting to this idea that powerful technology can be simple. And if you do that, your team can be freed up to do what they really want and your users can be cared for actually at a higher level, right? And simplicity unlocks that. Um, We've had customers who are shocked at how wide the SD-WAN deployments are on Meraki, how dense the like auditorium and even stadium Wi-Fi is. I was just talking to, uh, I was just talking to a customer right out here who's really uh, blown away by how much of the portfolio, how much of the technology's opened up using the APIs that we're uh, teaching folks about at DevNet right now. And um, I guess my only just thinking back to when we spoke last, which is like a year and a two year months and half ago, ago yeah. like I can't believe it's only been you know that short a time. It's only been a year because where Meraki's come in the last year, I guess the only thing I'd ask for your your uh, your audience is like, hey, give it give it a look. And you're giving away free switches way. here too. Yeah. Yeah. Get, it, get yeah. your hands on Todd, thanks for it. Congratulations on your success, making things easy, reducing the steps it takes to do something. It's a really good business model. Yeah, thank you. you. Know? And <laughs> right. uh, simplicity is great, guys. All right, Todd Nightingale, he's Senior Vice President and General Manager of Meraki team. Um, really changing the game, cloud scale, cloud simplicity, running workloads and data across the cloud native and an on-site, on-premise activity. It's theCUBE here, bringing you all the action in Orlando. We'll be back with more. Stay with us after this short break. <laughs>